there, and welcome to the Game of Talks podcast for me. Thank you for joining us. It's lovely to have you all here. Once again, I'm joined by Hi Arcade. Hello. I've also got the wonderful Pookie Vision. Hello, my name's Nino. Unfortunately, Buster isn't here, and Dunk isn't here either, so we'll have to make up for them by uh, talking more, saying more words. They're here well, in spirit. Well, yeah, uh, John's got work, and Dunk said he might be on after he's finished playing pool, so he could be on drunk, which would be hilarious. Yeah, it yeah, would be hilarious. Um, yeah. I had a good laugh with Dunk last time we were playing Battle. Was that when I was there? Yeah, yeah, you built kind of early, though. I think you went on a FIFA or some shit. No, you took Keebs out. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had to take him for a walk, man. He'd been staring at me for three hours. <laughs> All right, well, <okay. laughs> hey, Anyway, um, Andy, what have you been been up to the last couple of weeks gaming wise i got myself a platinum trophy for dead island 2 you uh, nice yeah okay. I, I rinsed that game and i, I thoroughly enjoyed yeah. it i know it gets a lot of shit thrown at it for a lot of different reasons um some of them fair <laughs> thank you thank you thank you i'll take my cash prize now 20 20, 20 quacks you're like a golden star yeah. one not even a coconut no <laughs> I'm thinking, because they've got the two DLC packs out now called House and Sola. And House is meant to be some sort of like trippy kind of um, Kubrick-style weirdness and kind of psychosomatic horror stuff. And Sola is meant to be a, a music festival. And they're both kind of interesting. For me. I, I really enjoyed the setting, which instead of Ellie, it was Heli, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, really cool. And I know it's really grindy. It is just kind of like first person Diablo with zombies. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, 100% is that. And I'm going to do the same for the DLC. Yeah. Thing. Just like a zombie killer. It's just having fun, though. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. It's kind of, it feels mindless, but it's not really. I think for me, the best part about it was just the, how much detail they put into the environments and stuff. Whereas I'm a big nerd for that sort of stuff where I'll look at all the, the details and yeah. look I mean, for a game like that, try and find all the secrets and stuff. Game like that, an environment map thinking kind of make or break it you know yeah and they did well with this one which is why i think it kept me playing because some of the missions were were a bit dick where it was just obviously kind of like filler and um, but i mean fun gameplay loop another one i was playing was uh after watching the fallout series and thoroughly enjoying that by the way oh yeah apparently it's very good I'm, it I'm, is very I'm, very yeah. good um i got back into the fallout games for a bit so i played a good bit of fallout 76 um <laughs> And started from level zero. It gives you the option to choose to start at level twenty or twenty or zero. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that's just for folk who don't want to do all the tutorial basic shit and just get into the the thick of it. But I started from zero and I got up to I think I'm like level thirty two or something now. Um, that's pretty respectable. <laughs> yeah, it's still super duper janky. There's a lot of bugs. Um, I've had at least four or five hard crashes where I've just had to turn the PlayStation yeah. off. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I played a bit of 76 when it first came out. It's uh, fun. I mean, if you're a Fallout fan, there's a lot there to um, enjoy. But I the, think... The thing that I found interesting about 76, sorry for cutting your fan, it was just, um, obviously, it's, it's you know, it's got online capabilities. It's got only multiplayer and all that shit. But it's also got, like, a single-player story built into it as well. So you don't have to go online. Mm-hmm. And that's... um. It's kind of what I find myself doing is just playing it like an offline single player Fallout game, except it has some of the sort of caveats of uh, an MMO yeah, game. Yeah. Yeah. And Definitely. Yeah, good fun. Just kind of, um, it, again, it's all the environment and going around and looking at the detail, exploring, finding diaries and journals and logs and you know, these little bits of storytelling that um, kind of add up to fill the world out. It was, it was good. Yeah, it's yeah. all there. Um, same as all the other Fallout games. 76 got a really bad rap because of the terrible launch. And the terrible state it was in at launch, but it's good. It's a good game now. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But yeah, um, yeah. What about you guys? What have you guys been playing? Uh, well, I've been playing a bit of City Skylines too, just trying to get into it, trying but it's just not really happening. <laughs> um, I never, I never stopped. At, you know, I got off Game Pass on day one, and I played it a bit, and I was like, this, is, you know, it's playable, but it's just not what they promised at all. Yeah. Um. And obviously, they've updated it a lot to put things out. Um. And it's again, it's playable, it's stable, it runs. I've made a wee city, but it's nowhere near what it's meant to be. And uh, that was kind of compounded the other week with the old DLC debacle. I don't know if you saw that. No, um, I never. And so basically, they they actually put out a DLC on the PC, 
It was beach properties or something it was called. And it it basically didn't work. It made the game worse than it was without it. Um, it caused more problems than it fixed in terms of you know patches and that. Um, so Colossal Order were actually they put out an apology and they actually refunded everyone and put the properties into the base game for free because it was just such a mess. So it was like, well, if you can't meet your game and then you can't meet DLC. Yeah, in trouble. Yeah, so I, I don't know what the next step is for them. They say they're going to fix it all, but there's just more stuff to fix. So, I don't know. I mean, like I say, it runs, but it's nowhere near what they promised. And I always kind of wondered for, I mean, fans like yourself who have a lot of the DLCs for the first cities, Skyland. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you've been buying packs of DLC over the course of a few years while you play the game to keep it fresh and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, they weren't perfect when they were released. Yeah, and I'm not crazy about what's you them at least. Um, the way I was thinking was like, I mean, you've got City Skyline Two. What's mm. the incentive to buy that game when Skylines One has all that cool DLC for it? You you start really with just the base game again for Skylines Two. So for me, yeah, I'm so like, I don't really understand why people would make the leap. What's the big difference between them? Well, the main difference is that Cities Two. Is meant to have a lot of the DLC from one in it at the start, right? Right, okay. See, and then it's different. also meant to have a lot of uh, like user created mods in it as well. So, like during one, there was a lot of mods for you know controlling traffic and different roads and things because they weren't in the base game. In two, they're supposed to have included that. Some of it doesn't work, but they have done it. So, it's going to make annoy the fans. Yeah, so so that's the idea behind it, but I mean the problem is they put these things in, but half of them don't work properly or do anything, so it doesn't really make a difference, you know. <laughs> um, and it's just not fun. I mean, roads don't fit together, zones don't fill up. Uh, the the whole economic, you know, money coming and money going out doesn't work. Uh, you get certain zones like mixed residential, commercial. Nobody uses them. When your zoning goes to the bottom and it's like flatlined and there's none left, it will just stay there. It's like, yeah, there's a lot to. Yeah, that's a bummer. It's not so good. Try me up, Walt, and it's like you turn it on and it's like you're just sitting there for half an hour because you don't need any zone or any buildings. And it's like, even the simple things like leveling the land, you cannot see what level it is, because it's all the same colour. It's all a, a single shade of green. You can't see what's higher, what's lower. So you know, it's like, just a lot of, um, lot, of, lot of stuff that's just not there that was in the old one as well. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're supposed to have uh, simplified the gameplay, but I don't want to see it, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not worse, but it's not better, you know? So I'm just disappointed in one thing. Mm. Um, yeah, anyway, so I've been playing a bit of that, and then I also started playing the game you were watching me play called Open Roads. Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, so it, it, I was telling Pook just before we came on there, it's kind of like a, a bit like an inter- interactive storybook thing, like uh, sort of telling me why or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a lot of the kind of hand drawn artwork, hands and characters are, it's almost like something out of an old comic book. The way it's drawn with the outline and everything. I like that. Um, because you were moving around a 3D space, but when you pushed an eye, when you pushed a button to bring up your like your journal or whatever it was, it was these 2D, 2D kind of hand drawn, painted kind of styled hands. That yeah. Came, and it, it was all really yeah. well animated and it looked good. Well, I, play, I played a bit more of it this morning, got a bit further. And you get further in the game and you actually see the entire character like that. Nice. So it's like a magazine cutout. So there's the character you play and then there's obviously her mother. Mm. Um, and it's basically like a, like a family drama thing. I'm not going to spoil it here, but that's basically what it is. Um, Sounds good. But yeah. Interesting narrative game. Yeah, a lot of narrative. Uh, there's also like puzzle solving, like you know, this is from the past, I need to solve this to find out what it is, and I need this to get it, and, you know. So, yeah, it's like a tell me why life is strange, that whole kind of area. Um, and I quite like them. I like them a lot. That looks good, anyway. So, yeah, so it's been good fun. Um, 
And then the other thing, just while you were talking about Fallout there, I've just downloaded Fallout 4. Oh, nice. To play again, because I want to play the, you know, like the, the next-gen update, whatever they call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've put out, so that's meant to be... Um, it's meant to be good. It's meant to, uh, like, improve the texture qualities and all that stuff, make it run a bit smoother. Better uh, support so, for um, newer monitors, widescreen monitors and things like that as yeah. well. And they just threw yeah. a bunch I mean, of extra got... free content in as well with it. So, yeah, yeah. So. Well, we almost like free stuff. So, Has everyone's jumped yeah. back on the hype train for Fallout since the the Netflix show was so good. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing. I was reading online, and they're basically saying since the show, the play the player numbers on Steam with Fallout Four and seventy six have gone up by like fifty percent or something. Yeah, it's it's human nature, though, isn't it? Like. It's, it... I think it's bringing like, a lot of new fans in as well, or people who never played the game like the show and want yeah. to play the game now. Yeah, it doesn't, al- it doesn't always work though, because like everyone, like when Halo came out, every- the numbers dropped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's they probably yeah, knew that. When they dog knew shit. Show, like, I mean, so. I've heard that the Halo show is just not very good though. It's fucking dog shit. And then the watched- Halo Infinite <laughs> is just kind of piss poor as well. Okay. I've watched Halo because I've got Paramount Plus, but the main issue for me with the Halo show is it's just so slow. Mm. You know, you think Halo, you think, right, mechs, guns, action, <laughs> space battles, you know. But you, you know, I've watched six episodes, and bar a scene in the first episode, there's none of that. It's just so slow, you're just watching some sort of bureaucratic people in an office he's talking to his soldiers uh, you know what I mean Space it's not yeah. here. Always have to call him baby <laughs> but, um, what's uh, politics boring you pick <laughs> no no I was literally like uh, fucking lent on, lent on my phone like, and it's, like I'm you know muted it no not at all like, like you're saying it's just politics so yeah and it's that's not what hell is so Ooh. Uh, well, the, the show didn't really represent it. It didn't really um, have any kind of little things. It was, I don't know, it was like Avatar, just dog shit. Not oh Avatar. You know, the, the, the last oh airbender, God. I mean, just dog shit. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, Pook, uh, what you been what you been playing? Um, I already play- know the answer to this, but... <laughs> I was, I was playing, playing FIFA with the boys and that, and like we haven't had a, a lost night yet, Like so we've actually... I think we're getting better because we don't seem to be losing that much. So touch wood. So I've been enjoying that on the weekends. Uh, I finally picked up Final Fantasy VII Rebirth again. So absolutely smashed the last two chapters of that. So funny thing is, is that I can't actually re- like I'm playing it and I can't actually remember where I am in the game from like the, the original one. I can't Please. actually pinpoint it. It's been that long since I played it. It's sort of. It's really fucking weird to kind of be like actually in the area running around rather than just like like you know like bird's eye view running yeah. around through fucking grass and shit. It's just the the, the monsters are just there. Um, but it just seems to be you've got an area. You it, it's like f- fucking uh, Far Cry. So you have an area and then you. Fight, you go to the towers and you open up the oh, towers right. and those towers put little spots that you've then got little missions you've got to do and you've got however many missions per like area yeah like an area do. thing yeah yeah it's like go and do those bits and then once you've done those bits you've pretty much done that area um you seem to be getting like an icon or idol on or do you, you call it like in each area and if you yeah, so you have to do research on them, and then you have to fight them in like a um, like a, a simulator, and then you can get that icon. Um, but um, yeah, it seems all right. I mean, I'm enjoying it. Like it's uh, um, well, it's I mean, just kind of fancy. Well, it's just beautiful. It's got, got all the original, like you know, the music, the sounds, and they've made it their own sort of thing. Like it is insatiably cutesy at times, like which is. Uh, yeah, which is all right. Amazing. Yeah, um, you have to go and get like uh, sp- these specific things in each area as well. Like I can't remember what they're called though. And like this, yeah, this, this new chapter, you like you jump into the little mini games that they've got in it. And I thought it's quite interesting. You become the pixelated characters from like nineteen ninety seven and 
it's quite interesting like so but and each area has a different chocobo that has a different skill so you can like go up you know rocks and mountains so instead of it just being like little feet on the on a bird's eye map view map it's literally you're actually running up and down these cliffs and shit on these chocobos and that so um yeah so i've been smashing that pretty much that's really it um i did play uh lust goddess the other night um which was literally um you're a captain of a ship and you get woken up by your 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 uh one of your one of your team um and she basically just ride rides you <laughs> to to wake you up and then you Point bust game. your load you bust your load in here and then you're suddenly on like a map where it's a bit like like that midnight marvels or something like yeah xcom it's like turn based but really shit turn based and you couldn't give a toss that you're actually fighting or doing these turn based bits because you don't care because you just want to get save the next woman so you can have her suck you off on the ship and Talk dirty to you and all this sort of thing. Uh, if anyone so, was going to play that, it'd be you. So his big ass titties and just like you know, literally, yeah. you see everything. It's you know, yeah, you're just busting your load all over these different different <laughs> women from all around the world. Like you know, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, he's, he's not in it, but they he's say, oh my, <laughs> they say, oh, they say, oh my god, quite a few times, but I don't know about Jesus. <laughs> And I played that Yik Nameless Psychosis as well, which is free on Steam, and I just an absolute fucking head fucks like being on acid. I got a clue what's going on. Like I was literally it took me twenty minutes just to work out what the enter button was, which is the letter K. And I was just running around I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. There was no tutorial, no intro, no nothing. It was literally just like you're just in like a dream or some shit. It's just these people doing random shit and it's like she's balancing on the top of a building and then she gets pushed off and then she wakes up and she's just running <laughs> around and I don't know, what was it? She was like, oh, she needed to get her name back so she had to climb this mountain and I got my name and then I had to try and try and get into a party but I had to find the, the nice brother, not the bad brother and then I found this guy and he was a proper pervert and he said, like, if you give me your name, I'll invite you to my birthday party so then I went to the birthday party <laughs> and this cr- crow boy wouldn't let me. It's fucked. <laughs> so. I didn't really understand what I was playing, to be honest. Um, oh, I was watching him and I was like, what the hell is this thing? It was fucked. Um, and that's it, really. I've like, just been diving into some weird shit on Steam, to be honest. And uh, yeah. Waiting for my brother to get back from uh, from his uh, his brother's wedding, so we can, brother in law's wedding, so we can watch. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So we can play some more Sons of the Forest. Like. Okay. But uh, that's it, really. Man. Yeah. Well, uh, me is a pretty quiet month in terms of uh, big releases, but there's a few, so we'll go over them here. Uh, it's finally here, Whole World 3. I know a lot of people will be looking forward to this one, so we might as well talk about it a little bit. No. I haven't spent a lot of time with the Home World games, but I know they've got quite a big... Is Home World a TV series as well? Or? No. It is, yeah. You know, I think, no, I thought that was Home Front. Yeah, uh, maybe, I don't know. There's too many. They've all got home in the name, so. <laughs> I know there was home. I think it's Homeland, maybe I'm thinking of. Homeland Security. I don't, I don't know. Well, Homeworld, uh, is that not like a kind of strategy game? It's, yeah, it's it's a kind of RTA strategy thing. Uh, they're all set in like, space, space age stuff. Um. The one more games have got a big fall and there's been a massive gap in time between the last one. I can't remember when two came out, but um Yeah, it, the last one was uh, Game of the Year as well. Is it still the Tide and Empire doing dog shit, like fucking with people and that like or? Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. I'm just watching the the video for it now. Uh, it's Space B sci fi RTS. Uh, like we thought, sim control, and, and then fleet combat, and so on. So the ships look awesome. Yeah, it does. I'm just looking. There is some fancy additions you can get as well with extra things, but I'm not interested. <laughs> but um, yeah, it looks cool. I probably won't be getting it, but I do like my RTS games, so I'll be keeping an eye on it. Um. That one's out the 13th. 
if you want to get that. So that looks um, pretty, pretty like massive space battles type shit, man. Like so. Yeah, it, it says here fleet battle, so I think it's going to be mostly ship, ship to ship combat. I bet like a Star Wars game actually. Um, all, all space derelicts called megalith megaliths. Bring 3D terrain into the classic homeworld battle space. Use the crumbling yeah. remains of an ancient civilization yeah. to it's... funnel foes into a brilliant ambush or hide your fleet from powerful enemies. Fortress team, fortresses team with menacing turrets and invite your strike craft into dangerous trench runs deep behind enemy lines. But not everything is in your control. Dangerous space phenomena like particle storms and asteroid fields. Will test even the senior of commanders. Yeah, I mean, so it, it, it does look good. It's, it looks like a like a mixture of um, like kind of like a red alert with um, some kind of like what's the space one like? I can't it's remember. Five big Mars or something. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm trying to think, like that, I'm trying yeah. to, is it Eve, is it? I try, so it's kind oh, of like... It, it, Eve not, Online or whatever it's called. Yeah, Eve yeah, Online Eve or something. Online, yeah, the MMO still yeah, it kind of, kind of reminds me of like a mixture of that and it's going to be like um, 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 with like terrain type things happening like Age of Empires where you've got yeah. like like th- th- like weather yeah, and things in it like thing. yeah yeah tornadoes and shit like that like but it's in st- but instead it's like particle storms and asteroid fields that just really fuck with your with your um, environmental things it seems like the type of game where you'd be like in an epic fight against somebody else and you do really well and you literally finish with like six ships on three hit points and then you get hit by an asteroid field and you just headbutt in your screen like yeah but um that could could happen but <laughs> game of the, it got game of the year though for Home World Two, didn't it? So it's like um, yeah, fleet battles yeah. like in space. So so if if you, if you like that, if it, I think it's like building each ship, ship kind of like from scratch and um, like probably like Red Alert. You're like like got a, a main base and then you like uh, like a mothership or some shit and then you like put everything together and um, and take on other people and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, but yeah, developed by. Um, what is it? Blackbird Interactive, published yeah. by Gearbox Publishing. So, and that's out on the thirteenth, is it? Is that PC only? Be PC on the for only for that. It is PC. Yeah. I think it's on console as well, but. <laughs> yes, Mikey. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, let's, let's move forward. forward. For RTS. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, definitely a sweep. <laughs> Uh, let's move forward a day to one I really like the look of. This is the Rogue Prince of Persia. This does look great. Yeah, now this is like a Prince of Persia spin-off of a spin-off because it's not actually done by uh, Ubisoft either. It's done they've, they've, by... They've, they published it. They published it, but it's developed by Evil Empire. Yeah, they've got a cool art, art style for this one too. Yeah, not part of Ubisoft at all. So it's... They've done like a... It's like a Souls, Souls-like Metroid a kind of 2D mm-hmm. uh, sort of fast-paced action combat thing. I don't know what you call it. Yeah, Metroidvania is about right. Kind of, um, I'm guessing it's a roguelike, probably a bit closer to Dead Cells, but they're keeping this... Um, Prince of Paris is doing good right now after being dead for long enough. They brought it, it back out with a really lot, strong a lot of one that, Was cool. it in January, February we got yeah. there? Yeah, and again, they made that a Metroidvania and they give it the old... Yeah. You took it back to its roots in a way, um, and it, we got really positive reaction from that. Um, this looks like more of the same, except um, different art style and different kinds of gameplay. And yeah, obviously they're fighting. It's like, so. They're fighting the Huns. Yeah, fighting um, against a Hun army um, corrupted by dark sh- shamanic uh, magic, and find your place in the royal family as you explore a vibrant reinterpretation of Persia but the pieces of the puzzle together put the pieces of the puzzle together together, and discover new areas as you enter the fight again and again meeting a cast of colourful characters through a non-linear story progression that sounds yeah, good. Well, the, thing is, the thing is because it's Evil Empire and not Ubisoft themselves they've kind of 
they're not restricted in what they do. They want to keep it pretty special, and then they can also add their own personal touch to it, if you know what I mean. Uh, I I mean sometimes do that, where they'll get some smaller studios and, you know, give them yeah. like a license Money. to make a game. Um, well, this is what you can actually do with everyone. Yeah. Here's, here's some money and here's some rights. Um, we want your money and we want your rights. Apart from that, just fuck off. <laughs> That's what everyone should say to Ubisoft, like, so. Well, maybe, but. Mm. Yeah. At the end of the day, the, the, the Prince of Persia franchise are worth a lot of money. Because of just yeah, well, I mean, they brought it back from the dead in a big way. The last one that came out was a 3D one, and I think I played it on. <laughs> fuck a while, a while <laughs> But it was just, it was, they were seriously losing steam after like, <laughs> the 2D ones. <laughs> I get it. And then um, you had Prince of Persia Sands of Time, and everyone was just like, this is fucking awesome. Prince of Persia Sands of Time. Yeah, that was like brilliant. Um, brilliant. They kind of continued down that path and just ended up beating a dead horse at the end of the day. So it was nice they to actually, see it come back. They actually killed a horse. Yeah. Beating a dead was- horse. So the time was fucking brilliant, and then yeah, the next yeah. one was, I think the next one was the Warrior Within, and that was very similar. Yeah, it, the um, last one I played was like uh, it was kind of self shaded kind of style. Your guy wore like a blue and red kind of scarf. <laughs> yeah, I think did it become the Twin Towers or something? I can't remember what it was called, but yeah, it got darker and darker, and it was kind of like they've almost changed the game's identity, you know. Mm, mm. Um, which was a shame because, like you say, the sound of the time was fucking brilliant, and yeah, and everyone yeah. loved it. You no, know? um, well, it's good to see that back on top again, though. Um, a lot of people Definitely. are enjoying the new one. I'm going to get it when it goes on sale. I'm just, it's on the list. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks um, good. It is worth saying that when it comes out on the 14th of May, it is early access. It's not a mm-hmm. full release. Yeah. Um, so it may end up coming to console when it releases for. Uh, you know, like a full release. I'm not sure yet, but mm. this is the early access release of it. So, but it's probably still worth getting. I mean, it'll be not terribly expensive, the budget, and it looks like it'll be a lot of fun. So, hell yeah! Which at the end of the day is what you want—a fun game. So, you know, <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, that's what you're spending your money on. Yeah, basically, that's out on the um, yeah, fourteenth, twenty fourteenth, yeah. For early access. Yeah, it is early access, yeah, yeah. Alright. Well, uh, the only other one we've got really that's releasing exciting. Should we say exciting? Paper Mario, oh, the yeah. thousand year tour is called. Oh yeah. This, this looks really, really imaginative, man. Like it's really <laughs> the Thousand Years <laughs> Door came out on the Nintendo sixty four. But it's like literally the way that they've they've you know, interpreted it into like modern graphics. It is just really fucking beautiful, man. Like it looks, it flows really well, man. And like the ideas behind it, like mm-hmm. they're able to go a lot further with like, um, you know I what I mean? Like, my own games. Disappearing. Thousand Year like, Door was on the GameCube. Sorry, not the sixty four. I think the sixty four one was just literally called Paper Mario. <laughs> well, I think Doug that was seen on last episode is that nearly everything Nintendo puts out is. Looks brilliant, you know, works brilliantly. If you don't put yeah, anything that it. it's like, you might say, oh, this is childish or this is pretty basic or anything like that. You don't put anything that's objectively bad. No, I mean, even that Princess Peach, which Pook, um, Dunk said was awful, still looked like a decent game. Yeah, but like, you, you, if they, not, if, if, if there's not Mario games out there. They're all, they're all intended for like target audiences, do you know what I mean? So, I mean, they're all slightly different, but yeah. Nintendo's maintained their sort of everybody can play our games sort of attitude. Well, that's that's the thing. They they, they go out to everybody. You know, everybody can play leisure leisure and, players. Yeah, I mean, when you look at some of their own games like Zelda and um, obviously Super Mario, those games get seriously difficult. Yeah, Zelda, Mario, uh, Mario, sorry. They, I mean, even stuff like the Pokemon games, they're a lot of fun. There's something uh, seriously frustrating about it, like this really childlike and colourful, yeah. friendly game just yeah. beating the hell out of you, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I'll probably get that. That'll probably be my next uh, Switch purchase is uh, Paper Mario a Thousand Year Door. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a game. Like I can see all the Mario games are pretty cool, so. Hell yeah. 
Hey, Pook, I believe you wanted to tell us something. Um, yeah, I'm, I was looking at a game here. It's called Super Lesbian Animal RPG. <laughs> well, I'm bloody surprised. <laughs> but that's already um, that's already out from 2022. So, um, uh, but that Paper Mario anyway is out on the 23rd of this month. Yeah, 23rd of me. Yeah. No, I, I had a couple that were coming out this month that looked quite interesting, um, but they're not all of them are not really for me. But they're just obviously decent, decent releases that you know yeah. gonna, you have a target audience and are worth mentioning. Um, F124 is definitely one of them because it's, you know, Formula One is absolutely massive in the. Um... Yeah, a lot of people, uh, you know, play them, watch it, all that stuff. Well, it's just, it's a bit, it's a lot, a lot like a lot of the EA games where it's like FIFA, basketball, football. So, like, because you have, you know, baseball, football, that sort of thing, like they, NHL, it's all, you know, they just wait for the next game to come out, which has just have a little bit of extra stuff in it, like more things to do kind of little thing. And mainly it's just um, updated graphics update of, um, of like the drivers moving teams and all this sort of thing. Like, so, um, but this, this one, um, so it's again, the pursuit of like becoming a, you know, a formula one champion, yeah, uh, it's That's really funny. like it's yeah. really like the mode's biggest major update since 2016. Yeah. So you f- it's apparently you feel like more at one with the car, and there's a whole new um, like modes um, um, with a dynamic handling system, um, and you can like obviously connect your f- favorite drivers and teams into different things across new mo- uh, modes and experiences. So. Um, they have like a challenging career driver career mode so different different stuff like that like so yeah. a lot a lot more um trophy like kind of like yeah. uh, hunting as well for it i so. mean i personally i'm not a big fan of these games that really yeah, i'm not, I'm not a racing game fan to be honest like but you can play it single player pv online um land yeah. and it's got on like co-op land co-op as well so it's it you know it, it's kind of an all-rounder if you just love formula one but I think most people play it because it's like Formula One is like kind of top end for kind of racing in like real yeah, life sort of things. So yeah. in order to get, it'll be a lot, very good one for people with their rigs to set up a, a, for it on the PC and just absolutely like kind of smack, try and smash the uh, uh, the the tracks that are in the Formula One today. And plus extra to usually have like other tracks like Nürburgring and all that sort of thing on it. Like so. But it's done by Codemasters and EA, obviously publishing it as always. So um, it's one to look out for, I guess, for racing this month. And that's out on the and right at the end on the 31st. Um, Codemasters is a talented bunch, so. Yes, Key. They did, uh, they did all the, the Dirt Rally games and everything. They're very mm. talented. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, they used to do all the, the Colin McRae games and everything when I was younger, which was great fun. Uh, Colin, Mc, Colin McRae was amazing, mate. Oh, yeah, I had... Uh, was it Colin McRae 04, way back in 2004, on fucking PS2, and it was just... You know, like, driving around that gravel track with, like, folk on either side, you wooden barriers and a co-driver cool telling you what to do is, like, revolutionary back then as well, you know? Playing yeah. at um, mm. But yeah, it was great fun. The mighty Squatsman, eh? The mighty, yeah. Mc- the mighty McCree. Kicking <laughs> absolute, McCree, yeah. Kicking absolute Scottish bottom. Eh, Unfortunately, McCree. David Coulthard wasn't quite as popular as he was. But, yeah, uh, but he, was a, <laughs> he is a legend. Right? You know, Even though he tried to kill Michael Schumacher once, he's, uh, he's, a, well, he's a legend. Yeah, no, he's a good guy. He's just not a successful. But, you know, it's good, just a bit of racing. Um, but, yeah, back to F1. Like I say, Codemasters have done a bunch. They've been doing the racing game for years. Um, I don't know how much of, how much of a hand EA have in these games because it's like they own Codemasters, obviously, since that purchase. But they also seem to leave Codemasters alone to do it. They actually said at the time that they weren't going to uh, meddle too much. Mm. Leave them as they were. So, don't know how much of it's EA, how much it's Codemasters. I guess we'll see. I mean, I won't play it, but 
I'm sure we'll see someone streaming it or something. Well, on the 31st, you can make so. And like you say, there's quite a large following for this thing, <laughs> so it's not like it's going to be a poor seller or anything, you know. All right, Paul. Yeah, well, that one's out on all platforms, so. Yes, it is. Um, next one is Multiverses, so that's come out of its open beta. Um, and it's um, having, obviously, its relaunch, um, which is apparently coming with a load of changes to its um, to its um, um, to its combat system, yeah. basically. Um, is this someone that's a bit like Overwatch? No, no it's the like only Smash Bros. One... Yeah, that's oh, what I was going to say. It's like Smash Brothers, but instead of like all the Nintendo people, it's like well, to be honest, I'm pretty sure it's got like fucking everyone. So Warner Brothers are on a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know what I mean? So it'd be like a load of DC shit. So you'd be like Shaggy from Scooby Doo fighting um, yeah, yeah. F- fucking Superman. You know what I mean? So yeah, every character ever, yeah. So it's literally um, like um, Western Smash Brothers in a way. So yeah, um, but, I presume it's a, an online one, like an MMO thing, is it? Yeah, well, it's not well, an MMO, but it's uh, online battles. Yeah, I've never played it, so just like Super yeah. Smash Bros. Mm. Yeah, it's literally Super Smash Brothers, but with like, like you know what I mean, like Western like shit. Like you know, you'd be like it's the Tasmanian Devil. So yeah, the characters yeah. the yeah. Warner Brothers own. So you got like yeah, Bugs Bunny Hundreds. and Shaggy and fucking um, all sorts of characters. Well, they've added new character kits, obviously, improved the clarity of it. There's new dash attacks added, um, and they've added parries to it now, like, so, um, so it's like, you, you don't just, like, get constantly battered, you can actually parry stuff and actually, like, combat change, change the, uh, the fight to benefit yourself, you know, in your favour or your way or stuff like that, like, yeah. um, so, like, the, because there's a lot happening when you're playing it, like Super Smash Brothers. It's like you might have like, like a, a one-on-one fight, people. but you could have like fucking four or five, and you just literally just continue to fight it together. So it could be a lot going on. So it's just sort of um, the, so like the new dash attack can like it, it, with the inclusion of the parry mecha- mechanic can actually like make fights uh, far more dynamic. So they tried to f- make the fighting, which is what it's all about. A lot more dynamic and um, 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 challenging, um, fun rather than it's just going like kind of more one way and that sort of thing. So, um, but it looks pretty good anyway. Like it's on all platforms, so it's coming to all of them. Yeah, um, and that's uh, Play First Games and published by uh, Warner Brothers. So, um, yeah, that's uh, looks quite good. Do you know what I mean, Andy? Do you know what I mean, me? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, geez. Um, The next one is a game coming out on Switch, which is called End- Endless Ocean Luminous. Yes, so Endless Ocean is basically a franchise. And there was a game, maybe like eight years ago or something, Endless Ocean, seven, eight years ago. Uh, and that was the first one, I think, and my sister had it on her original Nintendo Wii. Uh, and I think this one's basically a follow-up. And it's a lot more diving-based. It's a bit like some nausea. You're diving underwater, you can see your fish, and you can interact with things and all that stuff. I'm just watching the video now. It actually looks good fun. You can swim through caves, you can interact with shipwrecks. Yeah, um, it's made like that mud runner game where you're driving bored out your mind, driving a fucking thing yeah. up some mud and some fucking mountains and shit. It's basically that, yeah. but in this you're swimming with fish and shit. Yeah. So it's like you, you obviously you can like it, it could go as far back as like you can have like ancient creatures in certain areas, which makes it quite kind of fun and interesting. Other than that, you're kind of like going around taking pictures and shit of fish and then you have like the information about that fish so it is actually quite massive kind of learning curve in it so you can like have an understanding of the sea of the creatures in the sea i think it has like you know the um ecosystems as well as um the what do you call it when you have the uh the tier of like like animals that eat each other kind of thing oh like the the pyramid yeah, like uh, the food chain as well. So you'll have like a form oh, of that. Right, yeah, you can yeah, kind yeah. of follow that sort of thing. Um, there's uh, You can have up to like 30 of you swimming around. So it's like not just you. You can have your mates on. You can have like up to 30 people like in a, like in the parties on it, like yeah, um, yeah. like sharing stuff with you. And like if you're, you can like 
boost each other like you could actually share discoveries with people as well like um Cool. As like a Minecrafty kind of map where you're trying to get around and move around and you could actually talk to each other and if somebody finds something you can tell the other person and all this sort of thing like so. Um do emotes on it to talk to each other and all these kind of little things. Um and then you can kind of like customize your player, your diving gear, your um where you place things on the map a bit like um Yeah. Uh what do you fucking call it? Uh the Kojima game. Oh, the Death, de- Stranding. Well, Death Stranding. Death Stranding, where you could like put moats down for the people, like, yeah, like yeah, Dead yeah. Souls, Dark, Dark Souls, that sort of thing. Like, so it's, um, yeah, like all kind of emotes to talk to each other and uh, point out things and this sort of shit. Like, so it, you know, you can do like funny little dances, movements, this sort of thing, exercises, and all this sort of thing. So it looks kind of like, I, to be honest, it actually sounds really fascinating if it's the sort of thing that you're into. A lot to this one. It looks like there could be quite a lot to do in it as well. So yeah. you could probably get quite lost in a game like that, uh, especially if you've got other people that show interest or you could get Discord groups to actually play it with. So Yeah, it could be a group of you or something. <clears throat> so that could be something really worth looking Reckon into any, if, that's, yeah. if that's the type of thing you're into. So... Uh, but that's out in uh, that's out this month as well. And but that's on as far as I know, it's on the Switch. But I'm more than likely think it's going to come to the PC as well. I would have thought so. Possibly, uh, yeah. Uh, yes, key. Yes, Mikey. Um, the next one I have as well is called Animal Well. This looks good. Yeah, it does look really good. I'm just watching it now. It's right up my alley. Oh, um, giggity. It looks like a, a sort of old school Pac Man style pixel graphic thing as well. Yeah, I just thought the look of it was just stunning. Yeah, it does. Rather. Just the way the colours blend and everything is just. It's, yeah. it, you don't you don't see this style of art very often. Again, well, the, it? it's the art style with um, the uh, the idea of the dynamics of how it works in order to get through each kind of like area or screen or whatever. But it was. It's the it's the puzzle system as well, the way they that they made it look, and the fact that they added a map system to it as well, I thought was really good because it it can be a fucking ball like playing these type of games and just going back and forth like what I'm in this room now, now I'm in this room now, I'm in this room. which which fucking way was it? So actually having map maps to me are literally yeah like a must for me most games, but um, it just the you know, boss battles and so it just looks absolutely stunning. So. Uh, developed by Billy Basso uh, and published by Big Mode. Um, you explore in a dense, interconnected labyrinth and unravel its many secrets. Collect items to manipulate your environment in uh, surprising and meaningful ways. Encounter beautiful and unsettling creatures. As you yeah. attempt to survive what lurks in the dark, there is more than what you see. So it's kind of like if you're taking each kind of area as don't just think what you see is what what you get there uh, there are secrets and uh, things to be unveiled on like all the you know throughout the game so yeah it's like all linear cool puzzle um, things is a uh, video game it's junkie clear. on youtube it's his production his um publishing company and he does weird kind of game videos and reviews uh, but he's usually pretty much on point so if he's wanting to publish a game then that's a good sign because he never usually misses with his reviews and yeah. such. Yeah, he's put his art, he's put his uh, his name on it like hundred percent, like so. But it's it, it's a very it's a dense, um, I don't know, atmospheric puzzle box world with tons of secrets. Yeah, it's got That's a bit of a it. Yeah. yeah, it looks it's a bit a, retro. It's got that retro look, yeah, which yeah, a lot of people cool. like as well. Yeah, well, not long to wait because that one's out on the ninth. So yeah, ninth for that one. Hell yeah! Looks and great. then, and then this is uh, for me probably going to be looking at towards game of the year. Um, and I've been waiting for it for a long time because the first one absolutely blew my mind uh, with just how good it was. It was literally um, sensational, monumental, um, um, like changed the face of uh, gaming forever on how you make games, just how stunning yeah. it was. But Nin- Ninja Theory just blow my tits. So it's Sensuous <laughs> Saga Hellblade 2. 
Oh, so this yeah. is this is as far as I know PC only for now, but it's probably more than likely just going to be. It will come out on consoles some point, but it's going to be PC only. But this one is just the it, it, well, the first one won so many awards, which is how stunning, stunning it was because yeah. it was just a woman. It's just a, a young girl's like mind fuck and like um, psychosis or. Um, um, connection within her mind uh, and her environment and her her gods and her, her history and everything like that, like just all coming together, finding herself and all that, like so. It's like the next kind of stage in her um, in her life, basically. So she yeah. does, it's, a, she, it, it's a bit like an old school Lara Croft having a really bad fucking day. That's what like this kind of reminded me of. Um, but it's another brutal journey of survival. Uh, and obviously, it's Vikings. Um, uh, so you obviously intent on saving those who have fallen victim to the horrors of tyranny. Since you have faced a battle of over overcoming the darkness with it within and without, uh, it's the um, uh, so you sink deep into the next chapter of the story. A crafted experience told through cinematic immersion beautifully realized visuals and encapsulating sound it's um it's mature content but it just it just looks absolutely stunning yet again like it's pushing the graphics like beyond its means um and like just going literally so deep within somebody's mind to me yeah. is a game i can get very lo very lost in because uh, if you can emotionally connect with a game it can change ch literally take over your whole life around like you've oh, yeah. got work I mean, you, you have work you your life and... games are like yeah it's not even a game but it becomes like uh a... i don't want to say lifestyle but you know what i mean but it, it's just a very very yeah. long weighted very anticipated game and sequel uh finally coming out uh ninja theory uh published by xbox game studios and uh, it's coming yeah. out on the 21st of may so um yeah 100 percent buy for me this one um but when i get the money but yeah 100 percent. and yeah. it's, it's gonna have maybe a couple of dlcs coming with it at some point as well um but um yeah, it just it, 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 this will be up there for some rewards this year 100 percent. yeah i would imagine so i mean Considering what else is coming, and has really been out already, it'll be right up there. Um, yeah, no, I've got the first one installed, but I haven't played it yet. So. Oh, play it, mate, hundred percent all day. <laughs> Fucking, oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenging game as well. It's like it's—they're not easy games either. It's a challenging game. So it's if you like haven't, one haven't played it, where, first one, play it. It's like one of the things where I've got millions of games installed that I haven't actually played. All right. Well, you're doing yourself a disservice by not playing the first one. Oh, I know that. <laughs> but, yeah. I'll get to it. I'll tell you how to get to it. I'll stream it to you, Pook. Yes, kinky. And uh, for the major games, that's it. Uh, that's it for me. So. Cool. Right. Well, should we do a quick indie spotlight, and then I want to do something different afterwards? Yes. Cool. Right. Well, I've got a bunch here since we didn't have much to talk Oh, my yet. God. He's got a bunch. <laughs> uh, first one's called Indica, and this is by Old Meter. Um, Pardon? Pardon? Uh, Indica, I think I'll say pronounce it Indica. <laughs> Indica. Anyway, this mm -hmm. one's a bit strange in my mind. So it's a third person sword of a game. Um, and it, it kind of centers around religion and the rush. Um, in Russia, you play a young nun in uh, old Russia. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. I'm just watching this. It's quite dark. I didn't think it would be this dark, but it is. Because it, it, I've typed it into Google, and all I'm getting is some kind of like a uh, like a like an Indian type um, like rom com or some shit like or television yeah, series. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> it says set in alternative Russia. What the hell is yeah. alternative Russia, you know? On the outside, uh, Indica seems to be a typical nun attempting to adjust to a difficult and monotonous monastery life. It's Humble hard and to imagine a place more distant from adventure. Has also made a highly unlikely acquaintance. Yeah. It's it's off for the journey of self discovery, so. So it'll be a journey across Russia discovering your 
place in the world, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, that one's out on the 2nd of May, if you want to check it out. Um, like I yes, say, sir. it looks a bit dark. I'm not really sure. One of it is. What? This should have some jump scares in it, Andy. Like, could be. Yeah, it looks all right. Could be. Interesting, mm. anyway. Uh, next one's a little bit different. It's called Little Kitty Big City. Little Kitty Big um, City. Little Kitty Big City. Little yeah, kitty, well, you, city. you play the Little Kitty, obviously, the in a big city. Oh, <laughs> Don't switch. Bas- your basic, um, the basic outcome of this is you're to find your way home. And, uh, it, I mean, it, um, it plays out a little bit like Stray. You have to go across the city, uh, chasing people away, getting rid of things, getting over obstacles on your way home. Um, half the cat. So, you know, if that's your thing, then that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one is done by Double Dagger Studio. Um, and it's out on the 9th if you like to be cats. It's like leading ducks and shit and talking to dogs and you can put little hats on them and... Yeah, there is a bit of that, but there's also a lot more interacting with humans. Well, he's wearing a lot of hats. Surroundings. Um, which could be, because it could be shit, you know? But, I have no idea. But, anyway, it looks like good fun. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so that one is out on the 9th, as I say, uh, if you like being, being a cat. Uh, next one, I've got Men of War 2, and this one looks surprisingly good. It's not like you know, Call of Duty good, but um, it looks pretty good. It's another war game, obviously, Men of War 2. Men of War is a franchise. It's an RTS that centres around the... Well, this one centres around the height of World War 2. Um, but yeah, you've, you've basically got 19 predetermined missions to play in the game. At the height of World War Two, um, and it's interesting playing it with the RTS mechanics. Uh, but the game itself does look good. The graphics and the gameplay look a bit like a uh, sort of like Red a Medal of Honor game from PS2. Red, Red, Red Alert. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Um, you got I can't like drop and shit as well. It's just fucking bullets flying everywhere. <laughs> um, <company of laughs> bullets. Kind of exciting. Uh, though. Yeah, a couple of heroes, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, anyway, so that one is uh, that one's done by Best Way, and it's out on the fifteenth of May. If you wanna check it out, this, one, one, this one's one. on this one's on my list. Of, um, to be fair, what one's that? Men of War Two? No, more, this next one. Oh yeah, okay. Morbid, the Lord's Higher. This looks actually looks quite good. Yeah, so I was I was tempted to put this in the uh, sort of triple A releases. Uh, Morbid turn as it turns out, Morbid's a franchise. It's not just a one-off game. Yeah, it looks like they've taken a, a fucking hard turn from uh, the first Morbid game, which was a top yeah. RTS. Yeah. And I was looking at it, I'm like, they're so different. But well, apparently, like, they were like Diablo, I guess, or, or um, Jotun. Where Apparently they yeah. they tried to take a different um, um, direction with this one. They went kind of all out, and they've kind of like you kind of what do you call it when you're behind the character rather than like a Diablo look. Yeah, this over one's like a person. yeah over the shoulder kind of look in this one. So they tried to go a little bit more interactive with this one as far yeah, as I, so I was reading. Like... Yeah, uh, but it's just sort of um, obviously you're kind of forced to go. You know, it's not open world. You're just like forced to go down the track and everything like that. But the the combat looks really good in it, and the upgrades to the weapons and stuff, and also just the the enemies look phenomenal as well. And it's apparently supposed to be way more challenging than the first one as well. So yeah, it looks quite good to me. So. It's it's a uh, it's basically a hack and slash slash them up thing. This one. So, uh, what's it got here? Like, that was, uh, that was um, of... risk, risk insanity in the gruesome slash them up more with the Lords of Air with brutal combat and souls like elements, like Andy said. Defeat the five Lords of Air as you fight for your life across tor- tortured landscapes, yeah, rending cool. the evil gahas of their flesh bound forms. Yeah, I mean, um, that even, quite gruesome to be honest, but. even in defeat, the Gahars never truly die. They retreat into darkness and bide their time until the opportunity to arise again is upon them. 
Uh, it's a continuation and reinvention of the critically acclaimed isometric Souls-like ARPG Morbid the Seven Acolytes, with the heroic Striver returning once more to do battle with horrific creatures in a dark and twisted world of pain and suffering. Take our gruesome foes in an all-new 3D perspective, slaughter hideous creatures using a range of vicious weapons, equipment, and blessings to... Uh, <laughs> Evis- eviscerate everything in your path. So, yeah, um, interesting. But it's building on the sanity system from Morbid that the Seven Acolytes, how you approach combat, can have a dramatic impact on the world around you. Succumbing to the insanity can get, can get great, incredible power, but a great personal risk, and would dynamically change how you perceive the world around you. Battle your way through the five lands of air, horrific realms populated by five unique factions. From wintry mountains to rotten cities and beyond, fulfill your sacred duty to rid the lands of the evil that has befallen them. Cut down everything standing in your way to take on the five fearsome lords of the air, up to the challenge of by seeking out uniquely monst- monstrous, dark and powerful creatures lurking in each level. So, I mean, it sounds like it has a lot to it. You know? Yeah, you're basically fighting to not go mental. Because <laughs> if you go mental, you join them. I guess I can't remember the uh, the first yeah. one. Yeah, but this one is uh, on my list. I think uh, to be fair, I'm looking. Uh, it looked quite quite interesting, quite a good one. What it do does, think, it certainly looks intriguing. Uh, Does it look good to you, Andy? Yeah, it looks awesome. And like like Andy said at the top, it's it's streaks apart from the uh, the last morbid game. Streaks, baby, streaks. <laughs> anyway, it's done by still running, and it's out on the seventeenth of May. Uh, mm. And you can guarantee the book will be buying that one. So if you want to check it out, you can too. Uh, next one's called. Let me get this right. Gestalt, Steam, and Cinder. Gestalt, I think. Gestalt. Uh, it's kind of like a sort of two D action platformer game. Um. I'm just looking at it now. So it's set about the kind of wild west. It's inspired by 32-bit classics. Wicked, wicked, wah! Yeah. Um, uh, it's got quite a, a twisted, na- twisted laden narrative to it. Um, is, this Australian as, is this Australian as well? Because it looks Australian. I don't know it why. It does, yeah. A couple of Australian games come along. Um, yeah, I don't know if I like the look of this or not. It's well, it's sixteen and thirty-two bit. That's what it says here. I so, like that. Yeah. Or inspired by it, anyway. Just yeah, I'm just not sure about the gameplay. It looks a bit. I'm what, not sure what's going what, on? <laughs> what button, button pressing for uh, uh, repetitive? Is that what you mean? No, no. Anyway, it's quite action packed. I don't know. Well, this says action. Then there's a cutscene. It's like no. Well, it says join Alethea and a vibrant cast of characters as they race to discover the secrets of the Steam City of Canaan. Clobber armies of clockwork golems and hunt horrors which which sliver through the depths once forgotten. Thwart the twisted. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Thwart the twisted schemes of Canaan's corrupt overseers. The Defarius could. Committium, fight for mankind's survival and reveal the dark and dangerous truths riveted into the very foundations of the Steam City. So, yeah, very much Castlevania 2D, 16 and 32 bit inspired. Point and shoot, kick ass fucking kind of game. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know why it looks Australian to me. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> because Australians love games, if you're stuck in the desert, what else to do? You know? mm, okay. Make a game. <laughs> uh, that's the yeah, not- Metamorphosis that- Games, uh, published by Fireshine Games. Uh, that's yeah, that, on the that one's out the 21st of May. So, check out. Next, next one's also out on the 21st as well. It is. This one's called Paper Trail, and I've actually played the demo for this. It's up on our YouTube channel if you want to watch it. It's basically a top-down puzzle adventure game uh, all about leaving home and, well, solving puzzles, obviously. Oh, wow. I love the way that it interacts. The, the, the You can fold the, the, the screen like you're folding like a yeah, A4 you paper. Fold, 
Pull and the chorus, pull the end. Yeah, it's very good. Right, and it affects um, like the next stage or the next thing that's going to happen. I wonder if you fold a, a different part of the uh, of the screen that it actually does something different, takes you down a different path. That. That's quite a fascinating concept, man. I know. It's almost like a kind of origami thing, in a way. Reminds me of Pitfall for some reason, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's very cool. Um, I have played it. I did enjoy it. I'll probably buy it on release because, yeah, I love it. You know, and something probably great. It's out on the 21st as well by Newfangled Games, that's called. Oh, winner of over 35 awards and accolades. So I don't know if that's the studio or the game. Or oh, whatever. well, apparently it's the game. Most innovative game, game of the year, best family game. Um, to, I like the way that it says it's a, a paper world or, and a foldable game. You play as Paige, a budding academic, leaving home for the first time to pursue her studies. On the journey, you learn to fold the world, clever, merging two sides to solve puzzles, explore new areas, and uncover long-lost secrets. Yeah, it's quite a fascinating looking game. I wonder if it won awards. It's very uh, imaginative. Eh? Yeah, it'll look excellent. Uh, so, you yeah, know, I wonder the 21st. So. Newfangle Games, yeah. Yeah, Newfangle Games is out on the 21st. Um, it'll definitely be going on my list. So. Mm. Uh, next one was one that Nick alerted me to. This one's called Duck Detective Woo! Secret Salami. <laughs> it looks fucking awesome. This one awesome. you play a detective who's a duck. Obviously, yeah. And it looks like it's they, they look like um, like fridge magnets or paper like people. Do you know what I mean? That's what it, the yeah, people yeah. kind of look like. They look like you know, like stickers. You get like twelve stickers on a page, and you peel them off, and you stick them to shit. That's what they look like to me. Yeah, a little bit. I'm just looking but, at the trailers now. Yeah, this it's, looks uh, like it's kind of like um, same vibe as people yeah. Mario, it looks right? excellent. It actually looks a bit like the characters from Paper Manual. <laughs> I'm not sure it's the same people that did the, the Chicken Detective. I'm not quite sure. Like. No, I don't think so. This one's Happy Broccoli Games. So. Right, right. But, uh, but no, it, it looks excellent, the gameplay and the graphics as well. Well, it's, it's basically kind of yeah, 2D looking, like paper stickier people. Yeah, it's uh, 2D, it, but it's almost 2.5D in the areas. Well, solving crime is no walk in the pond. Ah, you're a down on his, <laughs> you're a down on his luck detective who also happens to be a duck. Use your powers of deduction. Ah, <laughs> funny thing. I know, it's brilliant. Isn't it? To inspect evidence, fill in the blanks, and bust the case wide open in a narrative mystery adventure where nothing is quite as it seems. So I think it could be quite comedic as well with the with the dialogue. So yeah, yeah. Quite, so yeah, it's worth a go. Worth a, worth a look at by Happy Broccoli. Yeah? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Oh. Um, yeah, I might pick that one up. I mean, it looks like it'll be a lot of fun, so, you know. Mm, that one's out on the 23rd, me. It, it is. Um, now, the next one, Pook, you'll remember, A Space for the Unbound. This one looks very similar to that. It's called yeah. Lane. Well, um, I'll, put, I'll, I'll put you onto this one as well, I think. Yeah, I like the look of this one. Um, I may pick this up. It's called Until Then. It comes out on the 23rd. Third, uh, twenty third of me by Polychrome Games. It's called it's got a cool art style. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of that, that pixel art thing that they do in a space yeah, film. It's like a blend of paint and three D space. And I find a lot of these games that are like this are made by people in a lot of pain. I don't know if it's just me or. I mean it. Either that or um, something we've been through, you know. Yeah, a lot of games have. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like a real, really really experiences. Yeah, a yeah, looks, story. Right? This fucking looks like he gets his heart broken bad, man. <laughs> so, what is this saying here? Like a fateful meeting sets off a chain reaction, unpen, uh, un, appending Mark's life. People disappear, and memories prove unreliable. Uncover a hidden truth with Mark and his friends in this narrative adventure and race to unravel the mystery before it's too late. Right. Indeed. It sounds pretty fascinating, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, it seems like a type of game that would pull you in and it'd be quite difficult to leave because um, um, 
Yeah, I think it could be. Uh, uh, you, you dive it into Mark's world of like what's happening in, in him, in his mind, in his life, and and the people around him, and how it's affecting everyone. Like, and it just seems Definitely, like a yeah. cr- very interesting story base. And you're not just by well, the looks of this, you're not just uh, playing as a character going around clicking shit. You actually got like social media on it. You've got like text messaging on it. So you're actually kind of like maybe deducing a little bit of like um, your own kind of like small small bit of detective. You know, detective type stuff. Details and such. Yeah, and, and, um, yeah. These games, when they put the details in, can really, really make a, a, a game stand out. Like, so. yeah, looks yeah. like it'll be um, yeah. quite satisfying. I like those these kind of these kind of games as well for the art style, but also for the gameplay, which is it's well, kind of like living real life or making your own decisions in it. You know, mm-hmm. I quite like that. Um, so yeah, that was on the twenty third. Well, that's poly, poly, Polychroma Games, eh? Not heard of yeah. them. So the next one's in the same sort of vein. Where it's uh... do you want to introduce this one then, my yeah, brother? Yeah. Um, Sunnyside by Rainy Games. Um, yeah, Sunnyside. Sunnyside is, <laughs> that's, it's... Uh, that's funny. They're live right now on, on Steam, by the way. Well, it, it's set in the Japanese countryside, which is a nice. Yeah, it's like one of those cozy life simulator games. Oh, uh, I like this one then, man. Um, you actually um, probably, it's looking like this could be I think I looked at this last the last month or the month before. Hmm. It's got different elements. I mean, you can go out and ride your bike. You oh, I did look at this. I've spoken about this before, so it must have been pushed back. It's literally, yeah, you play, you, you literally, I think you, it's, it. Uh, what's the Stardew Valley type game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, much, very much Stardew Valley. So you are literally like doing, um, you're getting uh, relationships in it as well as, uh, I think it's a, a woman comes in. I think she comes into a hometown that she's been away from, and I think her grandfather died or something, and leaves her a farm or some shit yeah, or land, t- and then um, you have to you you basically build on it and stuff like that. Like I haven't actually read anything. This is literally my memory because I'm pretty sure I, I did this the other month. Yeah, but it must it must have been pushed back. I think it was delayed a little bit. If you wanted to try that. Yeah, I might do, man. Like, cause it it looks like you. Uh, this is very immersive. You could, li- I think, you can massively lose yeah. yourself in this. So. I've always loved uh, any games like that where you find um, there's a lot of fun to be found in mundane things. Um, yeah, you can not actually take pictures of animals, things yeah. as well. Oh, nice. Did any of you ever enjoy Shenmue? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 You have to. You have to, you have to piss and shit in that and everything. No, not in <laughs> Shenmue. Um, but it was the whole kind of you're not running about beating up ga- bad guys twenty four seven or gangsters twenty four seven. It's like there's oh, there's so it's, much it's like you could just go through taking everything in. So I think there had a load of mini games on that as well. Didn't yeah, you? you could um, do all the street market games and stuff. Yeah, good. really good. Way ahead of so its time. so slow, but yeah, yeah, way ahead of its time. That was that was on like the PS2, and it was like fuck me, man. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> this should be out. I mean, they they redid it. Shen Shenmue Three was out, I think, however many years ago, and then yeah, uh, I think that was uh, as good. Was good yeah. But they re-released one and two on the same package i think like so you can actually get that but this one has the the master of the art of farming explore local resources build your dream home care for your animals and bond with the locals even forming relationships so in the japanese countryside so this could be quite interesting like uh to yeah, play but, mm-hmm. yeah i'll add this to the wish list because that could be something i could get quite lost in though but definitely uh, so that was out on the 24th done by rainy games published by marriage games Indeed. Uh, hey, last one I've got this one's called Cowboy Thirty Thirty. Okay. The <laughs> Wild West Future, a third-person shooter with three D bullet hell and rogue. Yeah, it, it kind of looks like um, <laughs> some sort of toys. So bullet hell is when bad guys oh, shoot big round bullets at you that come towards you slow enough for you to dodge, but. They may move yeah. slow and they're big and visible, but they fire fucking loads of them. That's why it's a bullet hell. Yeah. There's loads and loads of stuff for you to dodge. So I guess, is it, I guess I it's guess like they, fast pace as well. Do they? I guess they mix. Oh, four play co op. I guess they mix up the patterns as well, so it's not repetitive. You got to like move the fuck out of way of these bullets. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like. Um, it's a bit like Bind of Isaac or Returnal. 
um, how it's bullet hell, but you've got like a whole bunch of different kind of bad guys that fire different kinds of bullets and effects. And yeah, well, there's some very cool stuff mm. in it. Um, this one's launching into early access on the 28th. It's not like a. The skill tree's cool. cool in it as well. Looks like a yeah, yeah that's, that skill tree looked fucking mental. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, is, there is actually a demo for it as well if you want to try it out. Um, um, so what's this it. one? Uh, get ready for a wild ride with Cowboy Thirty Thirty, uh, <laughs> a thrilling roguelike third-person shooter transporting you to the futuristic Wild West of Thirty Thirty. The game puts you in the boots of a plucky bounty hunter. Your mission: nothing short of monumental. Bring down the ne- ne- Nebularos, a gang of uh, extraterrestrial miscreants and robots, as they wreak havoc on your cherished. Hollow Lasso County, are yeah. you up for the challenge? Mm. It'd be quite interesting, like so. Well, it's kind of cool. You could try a demo if you want. Yeah, of course. Uh, we could like oh. we could pick that up and. I'm <laughs> guessing it'll be online as well, but yeah, that yeah. one done by Subaru Games out on the 28th of May in early access. Uh, one more thing I'd like to mention before we go off. Tonight, um, since this is called the Indie Spotlight, I want to shine the spotlight on the game. Each month, I'll shine the spotlight on an indie game. Uh, it can be any indie game. Uh, it doesn't have to be released this month. Um, this month, it's going to be something totally different to anything we've spoken about tonight. It's technically very impressive. I don't even like it. Because it likes it. It's very scary stuff. It's called Pools. Um, called it's what? A, it's called Pools. Pools. P O L S. Uh, basically, what this is is a walking simulator inside swimming pools. Ah, I have seen clips of this online. A bit of a horror one. Like the back rooms kind of style. Yeah. yeah, there's somebody playing it on Steam right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's out is. now for like eight quid as well. It's like yeah, yeah. It one of those indie horror experiences. Um, that's yeah. one that I've seen people playing on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, it's quite quite interesting when you walk down a darkened corridor in that empty pool or something. You know, getting yeah, nah, reviews of overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, because there's no enemies, there's no lights, there's no time limits, none of that. You just walk around exploring a swimming pool and just shit yourself. There was one bad review, it got a thumbs down and it just says, this game is too scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I'd think, like to try that at some point. Yeah, definitely. I think for yeah, I'd definitely game... watch you shit yourself <laughs> playing that. <laughs> oh, that's, if... like, um, that's like Andy's uh, favourite line is like, oh, you fucker. <laughs> so that's like literally going to see Andy say that about 57 times playing this. <laughs> is that so, well, that's what Andy does? It's like, oh, you fucker, oh, you bastard. It's like one of those two you'll say. Like, yeah, that's how you've oh, gotten afraid. Something's caught me. Oh, you fucker. I'm just watching it now. You can actually go down the slides as well. <laughs> Game of the year. How'd you get water on the camera? It's actually pretty immersive looking. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's what I want to spotlight this one. That looks really good, actually. It looks good fun. I had a couple of honourable mentions, if that's all right. Oh, yeah, go on. Uh, one I think Andy would like it. It's called uh, Mullet Mad Jack. Mullet Mad it, Jack. Yeah, it's like fucking Doom, and it just looks absolutely like mental. <laughs> well, wow, Do you know what I mean? Super colorful. I mean, that's so, kind of mental band, but it's like what cyberpunk, uh, fucking uh, Doom. It looks absolutely mental. Seen- before and it's like you have a like your your guy's dying and you have to yeah. and keep killing people otherwise you'll die. Yeah, it's like crank. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just thought it was quite interesting from the list I put out. I thought it would look quite yeah, interesting. Yeah, this is some, it's, like, it's some actually, kind of arcade game. But the best thing about it is it's actually an anime. It's ca- taken from an anime. This is so that's why I looked into it more because I really yeah, want to see well, the anime as well. Yeah, that's how I put it, put it together. Like, so it's literally, yeah, just like think Doom and just cyberpunk mixed and just blow the shit out, and continuously killing shit all the time to try and get the remedy for this thing that you have. Like, but you're in, it's like car fights, car chases, corridor fights, 
um, and all types of shit. Like so, yeah, it's definitely worth a, worth a mention. And that's done by Hammers, um, and that's out on the fifteenth. So yeah, that um, looks good. Really good. Yeah. Um, what was the other one that I? What was the other one I had? You uh, told me about when you had called Nine Souls or Nine Souls. Nine Souls was another one, yeah, but um, it wasn't that one that I was. Uh, it was just the two I wanted to. Uh, All right, okay. <laughs> the two I wanted to talk about. I think the other one was um, uh, Lorelli, L- Lorelli, and the Laser Eyes. Is um is the oh, other right. one? So Lorelli is like L O R E L E I and the laser oh, eyes. Yeah, this one just looked really good. It's kind of like a kind of like a black and white like um like puzzle based game. Um, it, it did like a really old mar- manner. Um, um, yeah, brutal manner. Yeah, and it just looks really fascinating. Like kind of like it, it's uh, like kind of psychological mixed in with I don't I would say horror, but it's more like kind of more of a thriller type thing but it's got like a mixture of like built-in pac-man games um, yeah like it's, stuff the yeah, yeah, it's yeah. That very atmospheric so it just looked quite quite pretty quite interesting like uh and uh like a little bit of a challenge as well like so I like the, uh, art style to it. the art style looked really good as well so that's by simogo uh, published by anna perma interactive uh, and that's out on the 16th so yeah it, look, it looks very cool actually Hell yeah. It's certainly different yeah. to what you normally play. So. But uh, yeah, looks random as fuck. Cool. So, right, well, that's yeah, good. that's it. So, cool. Right. Well, uh, are we going to end in there, guys? You not got a question of the month, no? For three, if it's not, oh, I don't have one. <laughs> as you know, John's in charge of questions. He's not even here. I thought he just did the emails. Uh, I don't know. I've not looked at. If you had I've... um if you had to have dinner with the last video game character you controlled, who would you be having dinner with? Cloud Cloud. Yeah. Oh, right. I, any, any, any of the lassies from that fucking lost game oh that my I... god. <laughs> you should be so lucky. You wish. Any <laughs> of them, mate. Any of the girls from last game. That's what I'd say. Any of the girls from Last Goddess, but if I'm being serious, it would be Cloud or um, um, well, like Cloud or Teeth. Well, probably Teeth, I think, from Final Fantasy Seven. Fuck you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. as you know, we've played that open woods, and the the character that I play is called Tess, so it would be her. Yeah. Well, there you go. Mm. What about you, bro? Vault Dwelly from the Fallout. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> He'd be well happy for food as well. He'd be fucking starving. Yeah. Oh, no, right. <laughs> but, um, hey, yeah. Well, we'll end yeah. it there. Cool. Um, well, let's leave it there for this month. Uh, yeah, it sounds good. Well, it's like, so, next month. so obviously you got uh, Gamer Talks on the pod- podcast here. We did yeah. do it live and we did do a video version last month, but we were going to do it this month when it's not happened, but we, we will... But we won't be doing them every single one. Some will be audio, some will be vi- uh, visual. So, uh, for the watchers, there there are some more to come for that. Um, we also have Gamer Talks on the YouTube, Gamer Talk streams on Twitch, alongside High Arcade and Pookie Vision as well. Um, and also we're on um, Twitch, and uh, we got Gamer Talks questions at gmail dot com if you want to yeah. drop us any questions as well. But as always, um, you know, spread the love of gaming. Yeah, Keep the toxicity down, like unless you're playing. Cold well, one, other stuff, to mention, one other thing to mention is that last month uh, we uploaded the podcast episode to a YouTube channel as well. Yeah, and it actually worked pretty well. So I'm going to do that again. As long as and you then, uh, got some visuals for it, that'd be fine. So well, we'll get there eventually. I'm not Hell yeah. <laughs> Yes, key. Anyway, we're going to upload this one to YouTube. We'll also do some back episodes for YouTube as well. Just to uh, see how the numbers are, but at the moment it's looking pretty promising. Last month we had more than twice as many listeners than uh, we did on Spotify, so that's good. We'll take that, man. Take that. Yeah, appreciate that. appreciate all the love. Like any uh, win is a win, you know. If we could bring any information that you didn't know about games uh, coming out, then uh, well, it makes a makes our day. So appreciate. Definitely. It. 
Hey, right, well, thanks for listening, guys. Um, we'll be back to speak to you a bit more next month. Until next time. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-